walking, walking, there's jellicles everywhere, they're jellican, walking, jellicle, Tom Hooper's making them all jellicle. So I went and saw cats, cost me $9.95 to do that, and uh, I left with so much more to say than I was expecting. Enough to write this script, record this video, and you know, this is, this, this is the video you guys are going to get before I do a Dungeons & Dragons one next week. So you don't have to really travel that far to find a critic that will tell you that Cats is indeed transcendentally bad. That's not what I'm here to dispute. But what I am here to say is that you need to see it. I think if you enjoy film on any real level, you know, if you're the kind of person that appreciates film history and film language and you know, all that stuff. You need to see this movie and you need to try and absorb it as best you can. I'm going to try and maintain a very subdued tone throughout the entirety of this video so that none of you guys think that I'm speaking in hyperbole when I tell you the things that I'm going to say about this movie. This isn't me joking or anything. I legitimately think that if you have a passion for film, you need to see Cats 2019. <laughs> the argument for why you should see it is radically stronger than the argument that you shouldn't. Uh, whether that be through legal means or not, I know it'll only be in theaters for maybe another few days after this review goes online. Or it, It's not really a review, it's more just... Uh, well, let's get into it. What not to do. It's a very cliché joke to make when criticizing a movie that, you know, it represents everything that you shouldn't do when making a movie or what not to do when trying to make a good movie. Uh, in this instance, though, I, I'm 100% sincere when I say that everything that you can derive from Cats will center around what not to do when making a film adaptation of a stage play. And that's sort of my central thesis here. So what are the things that it does so poorly that, you know, you could watch this movie as an example of what not to do? The obvious one would be the special effects, and we are going to talk about that. But first, I really want to discuss the art of adaptation. When translating anything into a film, whether it be a play, a book, or perhaps more ill-advised, a video game, into a film script, you have to first figure out what works and what doesn't. Every single art form has a different way of explaining themes, uh, stories, characters, you name it. And Cats just didn't even try. I've only seen the stage play through a pre-recording. I've never bothered to go and see it. But I can tell you that the spectacle of Cats is one of the things that makes it so appealing. The stage play, I mean. The big costumes, the sets, the lighting, the choreography, all of that is why you go and see the play in the first place. In a film, though, these things are inherently less impressive. Yeah, I could say that the choreography and the, everything that goes into making a good musical is present for this movie, and it is, but when it's behind the veneer of, you know, fancy camera work, uh, special effects and everything else, anything that could be impressive about it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, of all the things to think about when watching this movie, it reminded me of the Star Wars holiday special where a lot of the entertainment is supposed to be these acrobats and stage performers putting on this show, but juggling and everything else is so much less exciting when it's behind a camera because the illusion is shattered. Who knows how many times they had to do that? Who knows if they screwed up and all this stuff? And when you're watching a film, you inherently know that this choreography is not done on the first take. There's nothing inherently exciting about this. So I'm already at a loss as to why Cats was adapted into a film, knowing that any excitement that can be had from cats is purely because you're watching this happen live. You're seeing people dressed up as cats in front of you in very elaborate costumes doing a very elaborate dance moves. But in film, it just doesn't matter. Unless, even if you're doing a tracking shot sort of deal, like, <sighs> why cats? Unlike most people, when they saw the 
CGI abominations that are the lead characters. I think that's when a lot of people decided that Cats was not good enough to be adapted to the screen. But for me, it, it started way before that. You know, just the story of Cats is incomprehensible. But the fact that they decided to go with CGI costumes when, as mentioned, the regular practical makeup effects are one of the main draws of the stage play, you just have to wonder where that decision came Oh, right. They needed to test out new technology, and every film is trying to be Avatar again ever since that worked out. Because, you know, we all culturally accept that Avatar is one of the best and most long-enduring films of our time. Special effects. Um, I'm going to very briefly talk about how the cats looked, but really the most off-putting part of the special effects was not even the terrible cat suits. To me, it was the environments. But first, let's trash on the suits. There were shots in the movie where the faces weren't tracked onto the heads correctly, so there was a lot of that floating head effect. But in actuality, I think the part where the effects sort of reach an unavoidable mess is at the part with the tap dancing cat. I don't know what the fuck his name is. I'm not going to look it up for this video. I'm not. The tap dancing cat, uh, he wears overalls and you can tell that the overalls are the only practical part of the costume and that the CGI artist kind of had to work around that. This was the part of the movie that was hardest for the CGI artists. Um, and even the editors, through how they cut the scene, sort of acknowledged that the effects were either unfinished or just impossible to make look correct in this scene. You get about halfway through the Tap Dancing Cat's dance number when you realize that any time that they're about to show the cat's face, it only lasts for a couple of seconds before they cut away from it, and any close-ups they have of him are very few and far between, and they're very quickly edited. And the reason that this is, is because this cat is very clearly wearing, or this cat, this actor, who's supposed to be a cat, is wearing overalls. And those are not CGI overalls, those are real overalls. Uh, and uh, when you try to make realistic cat fur look realistic up against what are actual overalls that exist in the real plane of existence, your effects are going to look way worse because they're constantly being visually compared to something that's real. And these fur effects look far from real. But you know, that's all good fun. That's stuff from the trailers that we sort of knew going into the movie would be bad. What really threw me off guard was the fact that there are environments in this movie, and again, I'm not speaking hyperbolically at all. There are environments that look comparable to the first Toy Story in terms of graphic fidelity. Uh, the lighting is just so poorly rendered on some of these shots that they look flat and lifeless and just unavoidably digital. I don't remember what the characters are. There's a scene where the main character has to dance around with these house cats that like to cause trouble and stuff. And uh, they're dancing on the stairs. And I remember turning to my friend with just a dropped jaw at how terrible these environments could look. You know, isn't this something that we've kind of mastered for a while? I don't think I would have ever expected any effects artist to correctly do those fur effects, but, you know, I expect more from an environment of a house. It's not even that eccentric of an environment. It's a house. How did you screw that effect up? If they screwed up one thing worse than the environments, though, it has to be the storytelling, which is also one of the things from the play that I will never think is good. Uh, almost all of your story is delivered through song, and it's not delivered very articulately either. And so when you change none of that for the, for the screen, it becomes way more distracting. I'm only spending a short time on this because I don't really want to talk about fundamental problems with the play itself. Uh, the film is more or less just a complete adaptation of the play. Uh, try to find a different channel that talks about the differences if you really care. I'm more concerned with what decisions plagued this as a movie, which brings me into filmic language. 
this movie doesn't know how to speak it. There's absolutely no point in the movie where a shot is used to emphasize a particular feeling or an emotion that the characters are going through or anything like that. And you could argue that part of it is because this movie's entirely rendered in CGI. There's not really a whole lot of practical anything to it. This is from the same director of Les Miserables, another movie musical I didn't care for really at all, minus the performances, which, you know, I'll get to that in a second. But one thing that he did that I found commendable is that he uses these long, unbroken, medium close-ups of the actor in order for their performance to really be emphasized and so that the feeling of the scene really comes through and the audience doesn't have this moment of reprieve. They can't look away from what's being shown to them on screen because the camera forces you to watch. And, you know, in Lem is a Rob, that works fine when Anne Hathaway is talking about how shitty her life is, but in Cats, uh, there's not a single moment that I appreciated watching Miss Hudson just sing for a long period of time while the CGI tried the, its best to look convincing. The entire time that these long takes happen, you're just looking at the small little cracks in the effects and everything else to try and see what goes wrong. And it's just a real example of a director's, uh, shall we say, use of filmic language coming back to bite them because instead of achieving <laughs> emotional sustain it really just makes the movie that much more awkward which brings me comfortably into my next point which is tone i don't know what the film's tone is you'll read a lot of reviews saying that there's a strong sexual energy that permeates throughout this movie and that's strangely true and i sometimes wonder if that's the intent of the movie but there's really no way to be sure. The movie will frequently get into close-up with a lot of uh, the characters when they're close together or lying down close together. They're making a lot of physical contact. The camera will bring emphasis towards these things and then quickly just brush it under the rug and keep moving. So if the film wanted you to kind of be hot and bothered and everything, it certainly didn't take the time to allow the audience to feel that way. And let's not forget that the pseudo-realistic cat designs of all the characters is easily the movie's biggest villain in terms of destroying any sort of sexual energy the movie has. You might find yourself watching this movie and wondering why you're attracted to cat people. And I assure you that's not the case because I got about an hour into this movie and I realized I'm not attracted to, you know, cat people with human-like hands and feet instead of paws. I'm attracted to attracted people that are wearing skin-tight suits. And that's exactly what this movie is, is a bunch of attractive, fit people in skin-tight suits, dancing around, doing uh, vaguely sensual things. And the final reason I think you should see this movie is because the performances are so sincere. You know I love Ian McKellen like any decent person on the face of the planet, but I don't know that I needed to see him try with all of the gusto in the world uh, do cat scales in the form of a meow. He literally does a scale where he walks, you know, he plays just this cat that's a perform. They're all performing. That's the plot of the movie. Is they're all performing to see who can impress this one cat to allow them to be sacrificed and move on into a dream realm. And Ian McKellen's character in, in Getting Warmed Up does a cat scale and a perfect meow and even does a head twitch like a cat. Meow, 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 meow. And th this is to say nothing of the scissor kick that Oscar-winning actress Judi Dench does in response to a very well-performed musical number. That's not even in the top 10 of the most dedicated these actors will be. Like you have all the actors walking around doing that very creepy catwalk that you saw from the trailers. They're doing that all the time. That's not something that, you know, just a few of them do. That's something they all do. And I bring up the performances because I truly 100% believe that dedicated performances, not even 100% good performances, but performances that 
are clearly never being phoned in and that are always taking something from the actor in order to achieve, I believe that that can save an otherwise okay script. One of my favorite shows on right now is Amazon's The Boys, and I don't really think that show is all that clever, at least not as clever as it thinks it is. Um, but every single actor on that show is giving it 110%, and that's the reason I'm going to be watching season two. I say that, but in Cats, everyone is giving it 100%, including the very mediocre James Corden and the even more mediocre Rebel Wilson. And even with that, it, it, it could never be enough to save this movie. Some of the choreography and vocal performances are among the best I've heard this year. And that's pretty much all the movie is, is, you know, musical performance. You know, when you go to a musical, you really just need there to be good music, good choreography, fun performances, and maybe some spectacle, perhaps even a lot of spectacle. And this movie has all of that, and it's still, it just doesn't matter in the face of all of these other poorly executed decisions. And I think that everyone should see this movie just to see how much passion and creativity and dedication, it really just doesn't mean jack shit in the face of a poorly executed idea. I think as a sort of bonus reason why more people should see this movie is really just, and again, this movie's only gonna be out for maybe another week, so you probably won't even have the chance, but if you did, I want you to feel special because you've seen a movie that's probably never going to be seen in that state again. It's no secret that Cats was being edited all the way up until the 11th hour um, because its effects were just so bad and it was even patched partway through its release in order to have supposedly better effects. I saw that version and I'm still sad I couldn't see it opening weekend to see just how much worse these effects were. But if you saw it in theaters at all, I got news for you, that's not the version they're going to release on streaming networks and on Blu-ray. You know, you saw a version that's going to be fixed again. And, you know, with a movie that's so culturally unimportant, I am never going to be making a push for the original theatrical release of Cats to be released to the public or anything. But I think that the concept of a movie being so poorly edited and released to the public that the studio has to go back and in some vain attempt fix the effects as though that's what people have a problem with. Um, it just says a lot about what they think of us and not only that but the art of film as a whole. With all these other reasons that I've laid out for you why the movie is bad, I think it, it I think it's incredibly not only myopic, but I think it's just, uh, I think it shows that the movie industry has far more contempt for us than it does respect. Because if it thinks that the thing holding more people back from seeing a movie that has, you know, no concept of adaptation from stage to screen, no concept of what makes special effects convincing, or indeed stylistic, what makes storytelling in film unique. It doesn't know what kind of tone it's going for, and it doesn't even have the respect to put its performers in an environment where their performances can be appreciated. Like, they really think that making the head tracking and the fur lighting that little bit better is what's gonna make us Cats is really bad, and you should see it. Judy Dench does a scissor kick. <laughs>